eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread ab abroad thy spirit that all the peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I think it's the nature of the Christian life to go through cycles such as this. Things are going pretty well. And then through a whole series of circumstances, we feel thrown against the rocks. We thought we could do something, but we can't. All of our efforts at will and continue to perseverance feel to, like they're beginning to fall apart. And we cry out to God for help. You see, I think God actually intentionally puts us in circumstances where we are over our heads, where we can't do it. And we need God's help to be able to enter into what it is that the circumstances are asking of us. That has certainly been my experience with all of this, that I have, uh, I continue to be thrown against the rocks of my efforts to be patient, my efforts at somehow being magnanimous and generous, um, trying to just get a good night's sleep sometimes can be an extraordinary challenge. I wake up thinking about and I think God's hand is in that. Because I believe that God is using this to draw us, if we would listen, even more deeply into himself. The wonderful line that Jesus says to the scribe, you are not far from the kingdom of God. It was not a criticism of his analysis. His analysis was perfect. This is the center of what it means to live a godly life. It's still more challenging than anything I can ever imagine. The scripture that is being quoted assumes the fact that we have been claimed. Did you notice which God? Our God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God. In other words, this acclamation is a declaration of a relationship. God's covenantal love has already and entirely claimed us for his own. And it is to him, because of the fact that we have been claimed by him, because we have entered into a covenant with him, for he has claimed us without reservation, that we can enter into a relationship that speaks of loving him. And it asks nothing less than all of our love not just sort of the religious part of us, or in the midst of a lot of other claims, but all sorts of loves. I, I think the distance between not being not far from the kingdom of God and entering in is the experience of coming to face the fact that I cannot do what is being asked of me. And that all I can do is rely on God's mercy. All I can do. And that, in fact, is what actually generates even a greater sense of love because I know that I don't deserve it. I know that I come to God as a pauper full of incompleteness and broken promises, inadequate resolution, failure even at my very best to do all that is being asked of me. And yet... Because I know that all of those places of real sadness, conviction, and shame are in fact stopped at the door of the blood of his cross and that I am invited in clean and cleansed because of what Jesus has done. Does more to inspire my heart to love than anything else that I know. And knowing that my relationship with God is entirely based on his undeserved love, 
claimed by him before I ever knew him or acknowledged him. Him choosing to enter into a covenant with me and on the basis of his initiative already beginning to invite me in. That is the thing that dislodges in me the kind of resentment, the judgmentalism that inhibits my capacity to be able to love and care for other people. I can't love other people, my neighbor, as myself, unless I am known as one who is loved by God. And that love has found its way into the deep, deep crevices of my heart, that without that love, without the lubrication of the Holy Spirit, the gears would be rusty, the resentment. What is the line out of the prayer book? Our anger at our own frustration would be the thing that I would experience really more than any kind of kindness, much less sacrificial love. And so it is into all of that, the expression of my own inadequacy, the joy of being forgiven and received, that softens my heart to the needs of other people in a way that otherwise would not be possible, at least not for me. There may be those magnanimous souls who without the gospel know how to love well, but I am not one. I need all of the grace and the mercy that I can get to put my needs on the shelf and begin to live and give even at the sacrifice of what I would desire most. Except in my heart of hearts, what I desire most is in fact to be faithful. Confession. I'd love to be faithful and still get everything I want. That's the, that's the dividing line of good and evil that Sol Solzhenitsyn talks about. But the fact of the matter is, is that God hears the cry of our hearts and knows that there is in us a hunger and a longing for Him that all of the things that we desire can never satisfy. And He wants us to be men and women, to be channels of the love that He pours in to us. That gives us the capacity to see what we would have otherwise not seen. When my needs come first, I see other people through the lens of how they may or may not meet my needs. And that actually is the heart of racism. So sisters and brothers, I'm glad that the drought is over. I'm more than ready to receive because I need to receive. That I may lead and love well. Amen. Amen.